Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for December 4th, 2022. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goal of increasing our faith. Because the book of Hebrews, verse 11, verse 6, lets us know, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans, chapter 16, lets us know. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we know that the word, according to John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So we cannot please God, the word of God, without faith. And verse 14, John 1, 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. So the word, and we know from John 10 and the verse 30, that God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord are one. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The book of John, chapter 13, verse 12 to 17. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the book of John, chapter 6, verse 3, 63, reads, It is spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. For we know from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. John 14, 6 through 7, Jesus said to you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Amen. And so, the words of life that we shall hear today, December 4th, are Psalm 130, Proverb 4. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Second John chapter 1 verse 1 through 13 and the old testament reading will be from the book of amos chapter 6 verse 1 through chapter 7 verse 17. all scriptures are taken from the new king james version of the bible copyright 1982 by thomas nelson incorporated used by permission all rights reserved unless otherwise noted i'd like to thank every listener to jesus for all too i pray that your faith is increasing Amen. And if you are so blessed, I pray that you would share it with another and in Jesus' name that you would subscribe. And now, Psalm 130. And it reads, 
Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Verse 3. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the evening, who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. Seven, O Lord, hope in the Lord. Let me read that again. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. Verse eight and last. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Amen. And amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed, as is, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is every hearer. And now, Proverb 4. And it reads, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live. 5. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. 8. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. 10. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. 13. Take hold. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter into the perfect day. 19. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. 20. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen. And this word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. As I pray in Jesus' name is every hearer. Thank you, Father, for your word and for giving us the grace in Jesus' name to not turn to the right or the left and to remove our foot from evil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And now the New Testament reading from the book of 2 John. The book of 2 John. Hallelujah. New Testament reading from the book of Second John, and it reads, by way of introduction, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. 
These words of the Apostle Paul could well stand as a subtitle for John's little epistle. The recipients, a chosen lady and her children, were obviously standing. They were walking in truth, remaining faithful to the commandments they had received from the Father. John is deeply pleased to be able to commend them, but he takes nothing for granted, realizing that standing is just one step removed from falling. He hesitates not at all to issue a reminder, love one another, verse 5. The apostle admits that this is not a new revelation, but this is not new revelation, but he views it sufficiently important to repeat. Loving one another, he stresses, is equivalent to walking according to God's commandments. John indicates, however, that this love must be discerning. It is not a naive, unthinking, open to anything and anyone kind of love. Biblical love is a matter of choice. It is dangerous and foolish to float through the life with undiscerning love. False teachers abound who do not acknowledge Christ as having come in the flesh. It is false charity to open the door to false teaching. In this case, the word charity refers to love. It is false love to open the door to false teaching. We must have fellowship with God. We must have fellowship with Christians. But we must not have fellowship with false teachers. The elder of verse 1 has been traditionally identified with the Apostle John, resulting in the Greek title, Janobi, the second of John. And now, Second John, chapter 1, and it reads, The elder, to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, too, because of the truth, which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. For I rejoice greatly when I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which we have had had from the beginning, that we love one another. 6. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. 8. Look to yourselves, that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Verse 12. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink. But I hope to come to you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. Verse 13 and last. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. And amen and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As is, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, is every hearer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, give us the grace to walk with care and walk with love and not accept everyone into our midst because not all have the faith in Christ Jesus. And what agreement has light with dark in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? Not that we should not be kind and cordial, but... Everyone we say hello to and how is not who we break bread with and regularly commune with. If they are not breaking bread and giving honor to the same God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, 
we have prayed. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Amos, today, chapter 6, and it reads, Woe to you who are at ease in Zion, and trust in Mount Samaria, notable persons in the chief nation to whom the house of Israel comes. Go over to Kolna and see, and from there to Hamath the great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms, or is their territory greater than your territory? 3. Woe to you who put, who put far off the day of doom, who cause the seed of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory stretched out on your pouches, stretch out on your couches, eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall. 5. Who sing idly to the sound of stringed instruments, and invent for themselves musical instruments like David. 6. Who drink wine from bowls, and anoint themselves, and anoint yourselves with the best ointments, but are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. 7. Therefore they shall now go captive as the first of the captives, and those who recline at banquets shall be removed. 8. The Lord God has sworn by himself, the Lord God of hosts says, I abhor the pride of Jacob, and hate his palaces. Therefore I will deliver up the city, and all that is in it. Nine. Then it shall come to pass, that if ten men remain in one house, they shall die. Ten. And when a relative of the dead, with one who will burn the bodies, picks up the bodies to take them out of the house, he will say to one inside the house, Are there any more with you? Then someone will say, None. And he will say, Hold your tongue, for we dare not mention the name of the Lord. 11. For behold, the Lord gives a command. He will break the great house into bits, and the little house into pieces. 12. Do not horses run on rocks? Does one plow there with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into gall, and the fruit of the righteousness into wormwood. You who rejoice over Lodabar, who say, Have we not taken Canaan for ourselves by our own strength? 14. But behold, I will raise up a nation against you, a house of Israel, says the Lord God of hosts, and they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamath to the valley of the Arabah. Chapter 7. Thus the Lord God showed me, behold, he formed locust swarms in the beginning of the late crop. Indeed, it was the late crop after the king's mowings. And so it was, when he had finished eating the grass, of the land that he said, O oh Lord God, forgive, I pray, O oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. 3. So the Lord relented concerning this. It shall not be, said the Lord. 4. Thus the Lord God showed me, behold, the Lord God called for conflict by fire, and it consumed the great deep, and devoured the territory. 5. Then I said, O oh Lord God, cease, I pray, O oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. 6. So the Lord relented concerning this. This also shall not be, he said. This also shall not be, said the Lord God. 7. Thus he showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will pass by them any more. I will not pass by them any more. 9. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will raise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. 10. Then Amaziah, Amiza, the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. 11. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from their own land. 12. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Go, you seer, flee to the land of Judah, there eat bread, and there prophesy. 13. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the royal residence.
14. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder, breeder and, a ten, and a tender of sycamore fruit. 15. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. 16. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord, you say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not spout against the house of Isaac. 17. And last. Therefore thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a harlot in the city, your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, your land shall be divided by survey line, you shall die in a defiled land, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from his own land. Amen, and amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed, that we might know that the Lord can call anyone to prophesy and speak his word of warning to his people in the name of Jesus Christ. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the seas and the star, the stars and the seas, and all that is therein was made by the Heavenly Father, the Lord, the King of glory. Father, we thank you for this word. And we thank you for the grace to understand and receive your word in truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that Psalm 120 says you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Father, for sending us this word and healing us and delivering us from every destructive things in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Father, we thank you for giving us the grace to abide by your words in the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever we ask in your name, according to your will, it is done for us. That your name may be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name.